Hi, in this video tutorial we're going to talk about an idea called subsurface scattering, uh, which is when light doesn't get completely blocked out by an opaque surface. Uh, if you've ever been camping or been out in the dark with a flashlight and you put the flashlight up to the palm of your hand and wondered why the heck the back of your hand started to glow a little bit red, that's subsurface scattering at work. Uh, other places we see this effect are uh, when you light a candle, uh, a wax candle, uh, and you can see that uh, that light from the fire glow through uh, the very top of the candle, but then it kind of fades out towards the bottom of the candle. Uh, that glowing wax effect is, again, the subsurface scattering effect we're talking about. Uh, Lampshades are another good uh, example of this in the real world. When you turn on a light bulb uh, on a lamp that's got a, a lampshade and the lampshade begins to sort of softly glow uh, towards the middle where the light is the strongest. Now we can fake this idea using uh, self-illumination uh, and illumination maps, uh, but we've also got uh, with mental ray a fast SSS material or subsurface scattering material uh, that works very well to create this effect uh, more along the lines of uh, realistically. Uh, I've opened up uh, a file here, uh, and if I do a, a real quick render, it's uh, all in mental ray. We'll see that I've got nothing but a, a hand, uh, a hastily created hand here with uh, a gray, flat gray texture on it that is, in fact, blocking out all of the light uh, that happens to be right behind my hand here. Um, put that light a little bit further down and maybe over here as we go. Uh, and so the lights behind here is creating that silhouette uh, image of the hand, but uh, it's blocking out all of the light that it can, and none of it's filtering through this object. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, this subsurface scattering material. Uh, the very first material in this uh, sample slot here is our, I've labeled it SSS, uh, but right now it's nothing but a gray traditional standard default uh, 3D Studio texture. We're going to change that to a different shader. Uh, so click on the button up here that says standard to change our shader uh, and we're going to find under the mental ray list uh, we've got a series of subsurface scattering uh, materials here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the subsurface scattering fast skin material uh, and say OK. That's called fast skin because it defaults us with uh, a pretty decent recipe for uh, human skin, uh, flesh uh, colored stuff. Uh, you'll notice that uh, our sample slot actually does look uh, pinkish peaches, uh, like Caucasian skin here. Uh, if we take a look at some of these settings, uh, you'll recognize a few of them. Some of them will be samples. Uh, again, increase that for a less speckled, more quality uh, look to your subsurface scattering. And then down here in the subsurface scattering uh, settings here we've got several things like color swatches now you can play with these settings all day long and never really achieve the effect you're looking for the important things here uh, are these three color swatches the ones that look uh, kind of a, a yellow peach to an orange to a red these are going to be our main settings that we want to really change here if I go ahead and hit a render uh, again now that this uh, texture is applied to our hand uh, you'll notice that we are seeing some of that uh, pink to peach colored skin there, but that effect is, is still gone. It's still a silhouette. Uh, these are going to be your three colors that you're going to want to change uh, to change that colorful effect of that bleed through here. Uh, we'll come back and adjust them here after I show you how to get that effect really kind of uh, turned on and working. You'll notice that in your viewport it is still showing up as gray, but that's because your overall diffuse coloration is white. Uh, and really kind of needs to stay that way in order to allow more light to pass through on this thing. Uh, if we scroll down, we'll notice that we've got some settings here for things like specularity and reflections that we can change a little bit uh, and, and manipulate, but what we want to do is come all the way down to where the advanced options are and take a look at really one setting that will really do uh, wonders for you in this department. And that's this scale conversion factor here. Uh, defaults us at 1.0, which is uh, pretty darn solid, pretty darn opaque. Uh, the lower the number here, the more light is going to get filtered through. So we can go to something extreme and, and, and instead of 1.0 we can go to 0 0.1 uh, and reduce that by about 90 percent. Then if I do a render here we can see uh, the how this subsurface scattering material truly is working and we get to see that uh, 
red bleed through color uh, on our hand uh, almost a little bit too much now. Uh, but you get to see that uh, that it does in fact uh, work really nicely here. If I put this a little bit further down and into my hand, uh, we can get uh, a little bit different result as the light moves and animates past our hand. Uh, this subsurface scattering material uh, is great for an animated character because as they pass by lights you'll get to see this through things like uh, uh, ears and, and hands and fingers and stuff like that should the light be bright enough uh, depending on your settings. As we raise this scale conversion factor number, uh, let's try 0.5, uh, kind of halfway in between default and now, you'll notice that less and less and less and less uh, is bleeding through. Now just barely the edges of the fingers are bleeding through. Uh, if we go somewhere right in between uh, 0.25, we'll notice just a dimmer effect, but we've got more of it now as it passes through things like our fingers, uh, but not the thickness of our hand. The way this material works, is if I hit perspective and kind of go around my hand, is the thicker it is between two faces, uh, the harder it is for light to pass all the way through. If you've got something very, very flat, this subsurface scattering material won't do anything for you. It's got to have uh, a thickness to it, two sides to it, uh, like the back of the hand here all the way out to the palm of the hand. Uh, the fingers themselves are closer together from back to front. The palm and back of the hand are further apart, and uh, we get a little bit meatier in here. And that's why uh, with our 0.25 scale conversion factor, uh, we're not getting, oops, which camera was it again? We're not getting quite the effect that, uh, that we had uh, originally with the 0.1. So this is kind of the, the number you really want to play with here, is that scale conversion factor uh, above all else. Uh, that being uh, changed and done and said, we can start to see how this thing's working. Uh, we can also go ahead, let's go ahead and uh, put that back to like, I don't know, 0.15 here so we get a little bit more of that effect. Uh, we can come back up and really see what these colors are doing. Uh, the top layer of scatter color is going to give you things that are, that are very thin. It's going to become more this color. And the thicker that our object gets, it's going to fade more into the deeper red color, the back surface scatter here. Uh, we can go ahead and, and manipulate these to get something other than skin, even though that's what this one was uh, originally built for. Uh, if I kind of pull this into the green spectrum on all three of these, a little bit darker, and do a render again, uh, we might have something that works a lot more uh, like, you know, one of those bankers desk lights or something for uh, with a green uh, glass or ceramic topped. Uh, a lid that you can use this effect for as well. Uh, other things uh, you might uh, play around with some of these shininess and specularities. Uh, we can we can turn in our overall specular weight. If we turn that up, our material will get shinier. Uh, the higher it goes, the, the the more narrow that effect will be. Uh, about 15. We've also got control over a couple of different specularity colors. Uh, and uh, this shininess value can really kind of make this look a little bit more like uh, a specular highlight that you would see on glass. Maybe if we raised it uh, to 50 or 100, we get some various uh, shinier effects here. Uh, you've also got the secondary shininess uh, weight here, which we can kind of come up to meet it uh, to get an overall shinier effect, along with our nice glow through subsurface scattering there. Uh, if you notice it's a little bit speckled, uh, go ahead and remember, come back up here to the number of samples and uh, we can try doubling that to 128 and we'll see hopefully a smoother effect, although every time we do change these things it does take a little bit longer to render. Uh, but that's a great effect that you guys can use uh, for your shaders or final rendering for things like uh, anything from human skin to creature skin to uh, lampshades and candle wax uh, all over the place I would use this uh, fast SSS shader for. Uh, some other things, if I go ahead and I, I get myself a brand new scene here, just to say if you, if you don't have a whole lot of time or you're doing something more along the lines for video games and you still want to get this subsurface scattering uh, idea going, we can do uh, some faking it with some self-illumination maps, so to speak. Uh, I'm going to go to my extended primitives. I'm just going to create a chamfer cylinder here real quick. Fairly rounded out edged uh, cylinder. 
maybe put in some some numbers uh, on my modified tab. We go let's say 25 by uh, maybe even 75 there. Uh, we can say set our fillet at maybe about 2.5. Uh, give ourselves 32 sides, so that's a nice round cylinder, and the fillet segments, let's set at 6. We can also give ourselves some height segments and do a little bit of polygon modeling here to make this look a little bit more like, uh, let's say, a candle. Uh, if I go ahead and I add a taper, we can taper the amount maybe up and the curve in a little bit, give ourselves kind of a, a little bit more of a, I don't know, a cartoony looking kind of candle here. Uh, we can move uh, our center up or down as we see fit or the gizmo itself. We can also limit the effect down here uh, so that we've got the last part of our candle fairly straight but the taper on the upper hand part can, can flare out a little bit more. Uh, once we've got that we can actually come back to our cylinder. Let's give ourselves some, some cap segments as well. Uh, we'll make a high poly candle. Why not? And at this point, I can kind of right-click and convert to editable poly. And I can grab this kind of centerpiece in here, turn on some soft selection, and uh, maybe pull down so that that candle's got that uh, that initial divot uh, in there that uh, candles have so often. There we go. Maybe even pull this out a little bit further, add a little bit of a bubble. We can bring that in. We can go further with this and you know model ourselves a, a candle wick and all that good stuff. But for right now, we just want to see this effect uh, in full motion. Get yourself a flame and fire and light in here a little bit better, uh, and we can uh, we can go from here. This is all we need to to get us going. Uh, I'm going to come up to my material editor or the brand new material here. Uh, I might choose for the default color something. Uh, a little bit off-white to warm colored uh, as far as wax might be concerned. Uh, maybe increase my specularity of things just a little bit. 60 over 20. And we can apply that to our candle. Uh, with nothing but default lighting, we've got uh, something that uh, resembles absolutely nothing. But over here in our self-illumination, should we turn that on, let's say color here, and add a Let's go with a gradient. Just a good old gradient should work. And we can turn that on to show shaded material in viewport here. Uh, maybe on my candle over here in the modify tab, I will add a UVW map. Uh, and we can go ahead and make it cylindrical to match uh, our candle in the first place, which is also a very cylindrical object. I might make it a little bit bigger, just to, or taller, just to give myself some leeway uh, as I do this. Uh, and here we can see what's going on right off the bat. Uh, we've got our white down here at the bottom, uh, where I'd actually probably want to drag the black down to the bottom and swap those for a self-illumination candle effect here. Uh, and if I, I turn that back on uh, with uh, with our default lighting, it's kind of kind of grotesque. Let's uh, let's add a ground plane. We're gonna modify tab, maybe 500 by 500, one and one. And we'll just give that a, a flat gray uh, texture there. I want to make sure that my mental ray renderer is assigned. Probably with some decent uh, scattering effects in here. Uh, and then maybe I'll go ahead and add a, a very low skylight. Uh, maybe at like 0.1 just so we've got just a little bit of ambient light since you don't light a candle unless it's fairly dark. Uh, and then maybe a mental ray area omni up in here somewhere as well. Uh, actually, I kind of like it from the side there. We'll go ahead and see what that looks like. Go over to our modify tab and let's jump down to the intensity. Let's bring this down fairly low, uh, maybe a 0.25, so that what we've got is a very low light, a low level light source here. And so we can see that our candle is now glowing at the top but not at the bottom, uh, where that flame should be. Uh, we could even go a little bit softer here, maybe just point .2 uh, and come down to our area light effects uh, or area light parameters and maybe increase the softness of the shadows since it's a low light, uh, a low level light here to 20 all the way around. May even pull this back to the back so that all we get is a little bit of that backlighting along with our with our candle here. 
All right, that's looking pretty good. Now we can come back in here to our candle texture, go back into our uh, self illumination textures, and maybe we can actually give this a little bit of a more pinkish warm hue here to match kind of the, the texture of our candle. Uh, I might even go up to and copy black to black to only getting that uh, that self illumination here towards the top. Uh, I've also got the color number two position here I can play with. Maybe 0.5 not so much, but I want it a little bit taller, a little bit higher. Uh, 0.75 might do me a little bit better. Not too bad. Uh, we can maybe lighten that color up a little bit to the darker gray rather than black. We can also maybe uh, turn on some uh, turbulence here or some, some fractal noise here. Uh, maybe at about 0.1 so it's not too terrible much. Uh, and then the size, uh, let's see what we've got at about 5. And that will make this a little bit more uh, uneven and broken up pattern there. Good deal. Uh, and then maybe we will put this back to about 0.6. Give ourselves a candle that can glow a little bit further. And there we're faking some of that subsurface scattering uh, ideas. Uh, other things might be, uh, we talked about uh, a lampshade. Let's get rid of our candle real quick here. And I'm just going to go ahead and make a, a standard cylinder real fast. Okay. Uh, we don't need any height segments. Let's make it fairly nice and round, 32 of those. And we'll go with 35 and uh, 75. That'll work. Uh, and then I'll zero him out. And then maybe we'll add that taper modifier uh, just to, to make our lampshade a little bit more lampshady. We can always come down, turn on our show end result, and uh, you know, maybe increase... Uh, Increase this radius, make it a little thicker. There we go. Uh, and then taper that in just a little further. Uh, good. Then we can right click and I can either convert to edible poly. I can also add the edit poly uh, modifier to this. And maybe I'll get rid of my top and bottom uh, so that what I've got is a little bit more open, like a lampshade would be. And finally, add maybe a shell modifier just to give that a little bit of a thickness or a wall to it. Uh, same thing. Let's add a, a brand new texture to this guy. Uh, let's. We can go ahead. We, if we want uh, any color we really want here, uh, let's go with kind of a yellow orange again. I always like I like the warm light. It's a little nicer, uh, and we'll do that and add that to it. Uh, and then uh, here we've got our lampshade with nothing going on. But let's say that uh, in our self illumination we add again. Uh, let's say more of a. Let's go with a gradient. Let's just go with stick with gradient here. Uh, and let's put black on both the top and bottom. And then we'll leave this kind of a uh, darker orangish color there. And uh, see what's happening, right? Then we get the light in the middle, and then it fades off uh, towards the end. Uh, we can also kind of copy this up here, and then maybe bring it back uh, into the deeper, darkers. A little bit more red even. Copy that down to position two as well. Uh, we might also turn this to a radial, which gives us exactly uh, kind of backwards there, but it'll put that a little bit rounder in there so we can swap these two. Oops, I swapped the wrong ones. Now we've got the darkness in the middle and the lightness on the edge, so we'll swap the top and bottom again. And you get the idea. Light in the middle, not so much at the at the top there maybe even uh, lighten this whole thing back out uh, somewhere in between. Uh, and then again, you can add yourself a little bit of noise, uh, a little bit larger, and you fake that subsurface scattering uh, pretty there, pretty well there as well. Now I gotta just put the light in the middle and have it cast out the bottom and all of that good stuff, uh, probably even excluding this from our uh, calculations. Now I can use a mental array area omni here. Let's center that right in the middle of that lamp. Uh, and then over over off the side here, maybe this is like 0.6 uh, and that uh, 
Oops. We need a similar uh, warm color, or even this color here for our actual light color. Uh, and then soften it up as well, just like the other. Uh, and then maybe even exclude that uh, cylinder from shadow casting. And now it's both casting light and looks like that subsurface scatter uh, is working out for us. Increase that uh, power there on that one a little bit. And now we're getting some of that gold, golden light coming through here as well as it looks as though it's fading off over time over our lampshade. So a couple of different ways we can do subsurface scattering or, or get that idea and that effect in on our scenes. All right.